Her Nikki here? Okay, I just want to make sure you were here. I was having a heart attack. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm just going to go through general announcements. We've got a few things to go through uh, since it's our first time back. Um, first off, and you've heard me mention this numerous times, uh, the end of this year uh, will be the end of my reign as your president. Um, and uh, I cannot carry on for a third year as per our bylaws and as per my wife. So, <laughs> and that doesn't mean it was bad or anything like that, but uh, you know, it, we need new blood. We need uh, new uh, leadership up here and stuff. And uh, you know, if, if we can encourage you to look at that and come to our remaining board meetings and stuff, I would like very much to find somebody to take my place. Uh, Cindy, yes. My place too. Yes, you're, we're coming to you. Uh, Cindy Yates, our vice president, is also stepping down for, uh, for uh, health reasons. So we're going to need a vice president. Um, neither job is, is a nightmare. <laughs> you know, I know every club I've ever been in, everybody's afraid to be president or vice president. And every club I've been in, I've been vice president, president, and it's, it's not been an issue. Uh, president, you get a few more phone calls, you know, and then you, you plan the meeting. I will help you with all that. I will still be here afterwards. Uh, I'll still be part of the board. Uh, I have a lot of ideas for the club to take the club forward still. And uh, if you've got ideas to take the club forward, then you would be an excellent person for president or vice president. So if I can encourage you to please let us know and if possible today, uh, we would like to know that. Also, um, and it's very important that we find somebody. Um, so also, um, Mike Lenaway is stepping down as the stair, the store chairperson. I say that 10 times real fast. Uh, so we're going to need somebody to take over the store on a uh, week, monthly basis. Was that a volunteer? Yes, Ray. Ray? Yes. Ray's going to take over the store? Thank you, Ray. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> now, if you step up for president and vice president, we'll give you a standing applause. <laughs> uh, thank you, Ray. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, I got some bad news for you. They already have. <laughs> Just like everything else, our prices have gone up. And, and one thing cool about the store is probably starting with next meeting, you'll be able to use your credit card or debit card to buy stuff from the store, which means, you know, you can plan on buying the $3 tool and spend $200. We don't mind that at all. <laughs> okay. Um, Ken Kernicki, can I get you to come come up here? And, right here. Oh, can I get you to come up here and? Yeah, come around this way though. Don't don't trip over. Come this way. Our friends at Zoom can. All right. See. Okay. We're good, right? Yep. Oh, you got a speech ready. Great speech. It's uh, <laughs> ready for office in 2022. Yeah, somewhere. Uh, anyway, the uh, Starkweather Gallery, uh, all of you are aware the uh, gallery show is going to be coming up here pretty soon. Um, everyone's welcome to attend. October 1st is the uh, opening um, Friday. It's going to be the opening reception. And uh, I have another uh, request from uh, Stark Weather. They, uh, some of you guys, a lot of you were in the empty bowls, donated bowls, uh, what was that last year or the year before? Year before. Year before. And they called and said, that's uh, coming up again. Uh, we sort of quick on the deadline, unfortunately. Um, uh, we have to have them in October 6th. So if anybody would like to donate a bowl to empty bowls and getting them to Stark Weather, we'll have to figure out um, a meeting place or a date where, you know, because I'm way on the east side. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's going to be it's it's uh, um, McCrest uh, home or McCray's uh, homeless, um, and they they have multiple locations that they they sponsor. Uh, they actually have a hotel now for some of the homeless that they can put them up and so on. So it's there's a lot lot involved. Anyway, they would uh, they would appreciate it if we uh, got involved again this time. Um, so if you have a bowl, would like to donate it, uh, contact Jeff or myself, yeah. and then we'll figure out. Uh, we'd like to do a group pickup somewhere. Uh, you know, like pick a date, time, and uh, go from there, and then uh, I'll drop them off. 
I, I want to add to that. If you can call, contact Ken. Yeah, that'd be. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be very busy. No, no, I'd be uh, great. I'll try to handle it, but <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just trying to. I'm giving him the, you know, the, the uh, he's the president. So, but anyway, uh, other than that, um, uh, that part is good. And then uh, uh, Jeff had posted a uh, uh, Pat uh, Berchulo. Um, she was, her husband was at Blue Water and had passed a few, few years ago, actually. And so she's selling a lot of his stuff now. And um, if uh, anybody's, uh, it's in Shelby Township, anybody's interested, there's a lot of pen blanks. Um, you know, most of the stuff he had, he's got a couple of drill presses, uh, Harbor Freight, a lot of Harbor Freight tools. He's got a Delta air cleaner, a lot of wood. Dave, Dave Berchulo. You probably know him. Yeah. Anyway, he passed in April of 2020. So she's just now getting stuff, you know, uh, put up for sale. So that would be, that was on Facebook. So I don't know if you just. It's on Facebook and on our page. You can scroll down and find it. Right. Uh, it it's a message from me if you want to search on my name. Uh, I will also get it out this week in an email to everybody along with a couple other announcements. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Okay, I got two. What time is the gala open? Uh, the October 1st okay. is a Friday. Yep. So that's our grand opening. What time? Uh, 6 p.m. Okay. okay. The other question is, can we bring the bowl that night? Yes. Okay. I was just wanting to not make it too complicated, but it, we can do that and they will accommodate. We'll put them in a, in a place. Uh, I, I didn't want to have it on the drop-off date for the gallery show, but if you have, if you got something, you want to do that, you can also on the twenty-fifth. That's also another option. But um, so good, everybody good. We have postcards for that. We did not get the postcards in yet from the printer, um, but we're going to have an e-card, and uh, probably in the next week or so send the e-card out, but then uh, she's gonna call as soon as the postcards come in. We'll figure out a way to get them to everybody. Um, go from there. Oh, and, and we dropped it off and double the price at that time. Tell them the price at that time. And what's that? What you're, what you're dropping off and sold. Yes. And start with the program. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just make sure it's on the application form, just the updated form and then, yeah. I sent you something. Yes, you did. Yeah. Too low, right? Yeah, no, no, we're good with that. That's yeah. I, I know we we yeah, we discussed we're, we're good. That's that's all right. Okay. All right. I think that's that's yeah, that covers everything. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. I do want to say we're operating off microphones off the camera. So um I'm gonna ask that we try to keep the um conversations and stuff to an absolute minimum because we're picking up background noise. These are very sensitive microphones. So. You're very sensitive, so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> okay, October 23rd, which is a Saturday, we're not going to have a workshop. We're going to have a demo by Kate Bolger. Our, our, that's going to be our next professional demo. It's going to be at uh, 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, our normal time. I believe that's the time we set up. If that's changed, I will let you know. Uh, and um, uh, let's see. I don't know what he is. Uh, I don't know what he's going to. I think he's demonstrating um, bird nest. Bird nest, yeah, bird nest bowls. Thank you. So that's going to be October twenty third. It is members only, so please don't invite anybody. Uh, don't give out the link because they will not be able to get in. Okay. That's a Zoom meeting. Uh, that's going to be on Zoom, yes, because Cade's up in Canada. Yeah. Or I can tell him to come here. <laughs> we may end up on Zoom anyways. <laughs> Yeah. Any questions about that? Is that going to be here? It's going to be on Zoom. Because Kay's up in Canada. He's north of Toronto. So, okay. Our next workshop is this Saturday. It's going to be on Zoom and it's going to be Ben Shipman. And he's going to be uh, demonstrating off lathe embellishing. We've done a lot of embellishing the last few months. Uh, this is going to be the first time we look at off lathe embellishing when we're not turning. Oh, good. Make sure okay. you have something to work on. Yes. I, I can't talk for two hours. Yeah. <laughs>
Right. So no excuse that you can't have, uh, you don't have Wi-Fi in your shop. You can yeah. sit in your living room and <laughs> just don't get it on the couch or sofa. <laughs> so. Okay. As you can see, we've got a lovely home. Um, and uh, thanks to uh, Pastor Jack Mantrek and uh, Rachel in the front office and uh, John Dizelle for bringing it to our attention. That worked out really well. And uh, while we plan on this being temporary, this could become a permanent home uh, because as you can see, it's a great facility and they're wonderful people to work with. And I'm not gonna get into the price, but we couldn't beat the price. <laughs> you know, a lot of places we were looking at was five, $600 a meeting. And uh, that was gonna mean raising the, the dues, uh, which we're not gonna do unless it's absolutely necessary. So as it stands right now, it's not absolutely necessary. What we do wanna have though, is a workshop again. Uh, we're one of the very few clubs in the country that had a workshop, it was a very unique situation. Uh, that's why PCAC was such a great setup for us. So um, what we're looking for is a place, preferably in this area, so we can also store our stuff that we've got in the U-Haul storage right now across the street. Um, we like to find a place with a parking lot, probably planning at accommodating 30 people, and um, uh, in a place that we can put our shop in, lock it up and use it whenever we need it. So if anybody uh, knows of anything or if you can do some hunting online and help us uh, try to find something, that would be wonderful. Um, it would be great to have a workshop again. Uh, it, it's just killing me seeing all those lace sitting over there in storage. Um, and uh, you know, we've had a lot, do a lot of work to keep them in good shape uh, because even though it's climate controlled, rust sets in. So uh, anyways, so if you can put that in your agenda, kind of look around a little bit and um, um, maybe talk to somebody who's in the, the business of buildings and stuff like that. Um, you know, we just need your help as members uh, to, to get that going. And, uh, and hopefully we can get that going early next year. Yes, Ray. How, how much money are, are, do we have to do this? I mean, is it $500 or $200 or? Well, of course we like to keep it as low as possible, but I understand that we may not have that choice. Um, Chuck, Chuck, ballpark, yes. what do we want to not go over for a workshop? We want a proposal and we'll look at it. Okay. We'll see how it okay. Get a proposal and we'll look at it. Uh, well, I imagine we would be responsible for utilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 we'll take care of utilities and electric and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, board members, have I missed anything? That's a good sign though. <laughs> Any questions or announcements from you guys? Mike. The store now has tote bags. Pens, uh, which are things we've never had before. I've got polo shirts and, of course, the socks. Okay. So come on down and take a look. Okay. Dumb question. Pens by pens, you mean pen kits? Pen kits. Oh, uh, what pens? Huh? There, there's uh, there's slim lines, aren't they? Slim line, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I bought my hat today. I haven't had a uh, Detroit area woodturner's hat in three years because I've had three of them in a row. They all disappeared. So we'll see how long this one lasts. <laughs> uh, Are you saying it's your forgetful? No, I'm saying there's a thief somewhere in my house. And somebody has <laughs> visited my house. I'm getting ready to clean out the front closet for, uh, for charity. I'll bet you anything I find all three of them now that I bought this. So, and you know, two of them were the, the old beige ones we used to have that were really soft and comfortable. I love those hats. So Okay, let me look through my notes here. Okay, President's Challenge. Uh, Chuck, can we run through the, for our Zoom people? Yeah. Now you won't be able to see that here because we don't have the projector going, but we're gonna run through the President's Challenge for the people on Zoom. And then we're gonna pick the President's Challenge like we did on Zoom originally. And we had seven people.
Chuck. Chuck is running through the images on Zoom for our Zoom attendees. Um, a couple people didn't get the email from today. So if you hear from somebody, have them check their junk mail because I think some of them are ending up in okay because when i go back and check it, it says that their email is in the email but they're not receiving it i will put that <laughs> in the guy. i'll put that in the post uh post uh, meeting message also okay. did i email out yeah. <laughs> yes he did i got it And I want to thank Ben for being so uh, patient with me because I've probably done a lot more emailing than past presidents. <laughs> yeah, I call him up at nine o'clock. I don't see it yet. Have you got it out yet? <laughs> okay, so we had uh, seven people that uh, did the president's challenge. We had uh, Alfred uh, Chambry, Kathleen Gardner, Mark Wallace, Richard Megnick, Cindy Yates, Ben Shipman, and Mike Foydell, and let me say right off the bat, every single piece was amazing. You guys did great. And uh, the members never cease to amaze me at the artwork that you turn out. And I know there's a lot of members that say, I'm not an artist. That's not true. If you're turning something that comes from you and it's something that you can present to people, you are making art. So, so the winner of the President's Challenge for this month is number two Kathleen Gardner and Kathleen I don't have their certificates with me today that's the one thing I forgot I promise I will get it to you last month last month she called me or she sent me an email on Friday so the sale is ending tomorrow and I haven't got my certificate yet so <laughs> I felt so bad so I did, yeah. which I may do this time, just, oh, matter of fact, let me. Boy, you know, I've been doing this now for 18 months. You think I, I wouldn't be out of practice. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Okay, we're going to go on to the demo now. And uh, when we get done with the demo, we'll do the rest of the stuff that we do in the show. Any last minute questions? Okay, without further ado, we have got, um, we have got our demo. Come on up, Jay. Jay Penfell, everybody give him a round of applause. Thank you. Before we get started, how many guys already use a skew chisel? Raise my, my show of hands. So probably almost everyone of you guys here are already better than I am with the skew chisel. So start out by saying I'm not an expert. I just enjoy the tool. Um, I started work doing turning about what, 14 years ago now. Ray uh, praises my mentor. He got me started and I do a lot of turning on his lathe. And uh, I thank Ray for getting me involved here. Um, when you want to turn small things, you have to raise up. So I do things like this. I'm a martial artist, a lot of you guys know that already. So I turn all kinds of weapons for the martial arts community. These are six foot staffs. And I do them all pretty much exclusively with the skew chisels. So some people say, well, let's start out with a, uh, a roughing uh, bull gouge. And I just go straight to the skew, I love the skew. So when you wanna do something that's gonna be uniform all the way across, it takes time to practice, to learn. And because of Ray's awesome lathe and the steady rest, I can turn out a product like this. So. He's much better than these talking. He is really good. <laughs> so I've been turning for, like I say, all these years. And for the first 10 years of my turning, all I turned were these handles for the what weapons you, I make. Excuse me, what did you make this one? Like? That's Purple Heart. Purple Heart, that's what I thought. Purple Heart. So I turned these exclusively for the first 10 years, nothing else but these. And then I started getting involved in doing larger pieces. And then I started doing bowls a couple of years ago and fell in love with bowl turning. So I don't use a skew on bowls, but I do a lot of spindle work. So, I'm sorry? That's a handle for a ton, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a ton. A lot of things like, uh, you know, these, these little fighting sticks here. And again, I, I use a lot of different woods. And it really doesn't matter what wood you're using. It's all about, you know, tool presentation. If you know how to run that, ride the bevel, 
you'll be fine with the tool. So you can take a look at these different things. It's a good idea. So we talk about different types of skews and there's all kinds. So my favorite period is the Allen Lacer. I'll do, give you a little commercial right now. This is my very first skew. I've been using it for like 14 years now. I talked to Alan a couple of months ago at one of the uh, other meetings on, on Zoom. And he says, you're still using the same skew? Alan shot himself in the foot. He makes them so well, they hold a great edge. I've used it 14 years. I'm still using it today. And you can see, you'll see there's still about five and a half, six inches of metal there to work with. So it'll be a few more years till I got to buy another one of Alan's skews again. It's a great tool. I got this one recently from uh, Doug Thompson. Again, a great tool, great uh, tool to work with. You see, obviously, the difference in the grinds, whereas Allen's has the curvature to it, whereas Doug's is straight across. So for different types of jobs, each one has its purpose. The thing I like about using the curved skew like this, you almost never get a catch. If you understand how to ride that bevel, you're not having the corners touch, you're always riding along the curve there, you'll pretty much never get a catch as long as you maintain the bevel contact. So. There's different sizes and skews. Some are curved, some are straight. There's some more different uh, types. You got the, the, the oval skews, flat skews. Again, different angles. I got a lot of curves. I like the curves. But uh, I picked up a, a skew this past month over at uh, Glen Wing that was uh, on the table. It was a used tool. I, I wanted to bring it saying I forgot it home, unfortunately. Some guy took a bastard file and made it into a skew. So I bought it for 10 bucks just to show you guys I left it at home. Shame on me. But I used it this last week. It works just as good as the other ones do. As long as you have a good edge, you know how to ride the bevel, it's going to work for you. So don't get so caught up in the sizes and so on. Learn how to ride the bevel. You'll be just fine. So your preference, uh, an oval or flat? I definitely like the, like the, the no, oh, I mean, oh, this versus the other one? Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Kind of bevel. Yeah, people okay. people oftentimes say that when they're riding the uh, the oval that it catches on them. If, if you're if you're paying attention to what you're doing, you're not gonna have a problem with it. It's a matter of it's like anything else. You pick up the tool. If you started turning with this tool for ten years and then somebody gave you this tool, you say, "Oh, I don't like that. I want to use this." If someone gave you this for ten years and you all of a sudden got this, you say, "I don't want to use that. This is better." So it's a matter of what you're trained on and what you're used to. It's all about learning the tool. Question. About sharpening that oval it's a pain in the butt. Okay. So sharpening these is, is not easy. If you have a jig, that's great. I do everything freehand. So uh, this is uh, a great tool to turn with once it's sharpened. Okay. If you haven't sharpened it, you got to sharpen it. It's a pain. So that said, one last thing I'll talk about is this one, which I use a great deal on my uh, small handles. And this is a, it's a squared off. It's, it doesn't have an angle to it. And what I like about this is for making my tenons, this works perfectly. So it's straight across, works real nice. For doing planing cuts, I use this a lot of times. So there's two cuts I'm gonna go through today and that's it. There's like seven different cuts. Alan teaches, I'm only gonna do two. I'm gonna do a, a, a plunge cut or a uh, peeling cut. I'm gonna do a planing cut. Those are the only two cuts we're gonna do today to do this, this, this project. And because a lot of people are not comfortable with using spin to begin with, I didn't want to make anything elaborate. So what I'm going to do is simply a French rolling pin. Something very simple, something that you can just make your cylinder, cylinder around and practice getting your angles. So what's nice about this is that you have to go both sides. So you have to turn your tool around, you have to learn how to cut from both sides from the center down. And that's really important because if you cut from the end up, you're cutting into unsupported grain and you'll get catches. So you always want to make sure that you understand where your grain is, what direction it's going in. You want to cut down the grain, not up into the grain. You guys all know that, right? I'm preaching the choir. So, so with that said, we'll pass this around. And by the way, I've already used that several times for making pizzas. It works really good. Hey, Jake, on a French rolling pin, uh, is it true that there's um, very specific sizes? I have no idea. Papers? No idea. Okay. All right. To be honest with you, I saw one on, on YouTube. I saw that looks cool, and I made one, and I decided that's what I'd make. Okay. So 
if you if you know about measurements it should be share that with me okay cool okay so in all fairness i'm right i'm flying off the seat of my pants here when it comes down to the sizing and stuff i just like doing the work so i'm going to start with my alan lasser now you guys in the front row you didn't bring your catcher's mitts <laughs> Okay. Uh, yes. I'll also say before I get started, also regarding speed, people will oftentimes ask me, well, what do you, what, what speed do you turn at? I don't go super fast. Some people say, oh, you want a better cut, turn faster. The faster you turn, the cleaner the cut. No, it's about tool presentation and feed rate. No matter how slow you turn, if you slow down your presentation, your, your, your feed rate, you'll still get a nice clean cut. Don't hurt yourself. The faster you go, the more dangerous it is. I normally work with a face shield, but I'm gonna to talk to you guys today. And it's hard to talk through a face shield. So I'll, I'll, I'll hope not to get anything flying off the lid today. Okay, so. This is reading 1485. It doesn't sound like it, but it's what's reading for me. So to start out with a planing cut, you wanna start off not flat on the tool rest, but slightly raised up. I'm gonna start off on the edge here and cut off a little bit. I'm not gonna go straight in the middle, I'm not gonna go straight at the end. I'm gonna go a little bit, just slicing. As I go, I go back a little further. Let's try. The piece of material I'm using right now is a piece of hickory. It's three pieces laminated together. When you're doing these cuts, as a beginner especially, you'll start out by coming on top, coming down until you engage, and you're cutting. I should have said that beforehand. I'm so used to doing this, I just go to the cut, which is bad on my part. Shame on me. So that's a, a good way to cut, but it's also slower. Question? Uh, tool rest, is there a certain height that you I'm just a tad below center right now. Just a tad below. Depending on where you're, where you're at with your cut, you'll find it more comfortable, a little higher, a little lower. How tall is your lathe? Where's your arm? How, 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 how tall are you? You have to find that for yourself. So that, that's a, a peeling cut. Now I'm going to do a, uh, I'm sorry, that's a planing cut. Now I'm going to do a peeling cut, which is a little faster. And again, I'm going to start out high. Go ahead, Gage. Doesn't that taste good? No. Uh, if you're cutting it the opposite direction, just with that toe, you're going to push up your grain. So that's all rounded right now. It's not smooth, but it's round. That gives you a good idea to start. I got started a couple days ago and I did it in stages so I could go a little faster through the demonstration. This piece is a real nightmare for most people because it's a bowed piece of material. Question? Jake, um, is this a, do you have a standard sweep you follow or you just do it by eye? That was my first one. This is my second one. 
<laughs> Just being honest with you, though. <laughs> so, if you guys see the the way this wobbles here, that would scare a lot of people, especially with a skew chisel. But, and again, you guys brought your catcher's mitts, right? Okay. So again, when doing a peel, a, uh, a a peeling cut. I don't want to go too fast here. I don't want to see it flying off the uh, machine. But again, I'm going to start high. Put my time and sit down. No hurry. One thing I'll say real quickly, if I had a, uh, a knot coming out of this, I'd be in trouble right now. This piece has no knots in it. We're talking about the grain direction. Skews are good for long grain, not end grain. If I had a knot coming out of this piece, like over here, I'd be real careful as not to hit that knot because I'll get a catch and it'll, it'll blow. So it's really important to understand what the direction of the material is and sometimes in wood, they change direction on you. You gotta know what piece of wood you're cutting. We still have some bark on here. I'll take it down a little faster now. I'm looking to see as I cut through, is there a, a uh, problem there where I'm gonna get a catch? I wanna make sure I know my wood all, at all times.
Question. When you're doing, you're doing peeling cuts there. I started with peeling, then started going back to uh, uh, flaming. Which way do you have your point? The long point. I'll do it either way. Because because of the fact you've got the curvature here, you're not touching the tips. You can go either direction. It's not going to make a difference. If you had if you had uh, a straight a straight uh, edge on there, it would definitely make a difference. Uh, that's paper you said. No, this is a piece of maple. Oh, I'm sorry. How dry was it? The, the piece of hickory. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this one over here? So. I didn't I didn't check it. The hickory I've had for years. I know it's dry. I use it all the time. This is a piece of green material. So yeah, this is this is about probably a year a year down on the ground, thereabouts. So if I go with this chisel. Hey, I have a question. Going in one direction. If you look at this finish here, how smooth the cut is. I'm getting some ripples here because I'm going really fast. If I slow down my speed, Have a really cleaner uh, presentation here, but again, it takes time to get used to the tool. What you're doing, I'm not a, a press, press, I'm not a uh, pro, like I said. Although Ray thinks I'm much better than I think I am, <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, take your time. Now for sizing, I've been using this tool for a number of years. I bought this. Right around 14 years ago at a estate sale for a buck, one of the best bucks I ever spent. And I simply find which one, oh, there it is right there, go right between those two. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this size and then I'll be able to sand down to it. It doesn't have, to, I don't wanna go to finish size on the first cut, so to speak. And as I look at this piece, By 19 inches comes to right here. So nine and a half inches, that'll be my center right there. So since I wanna make sure it's nice and even. Yes. Sorry. Now I know how, how deep I want to go. I have my target now. So we're talking about the planning cut having the tool lift it up a little bit. I'm gonna start out here on the edge. That's bad, don't do that. <laughs> I 
Sometimes I'll show you what not to do. Okay. What? I want to watch our angle here, our, our, our profile. So I'll make it as even as possible. Another thing I learned from Ray that you're probably watching right now is that my hands are not moving in between my body. I got my position, my body is moving with the toe. It's really important that you're not moving in, your hands independently. You have to keep everything unified. Absolutely. Let me slow myself down a little bit. Without the video, it's hard to see down. Oh. Yeah, we're okay. The, the piece is blocking our vision. Look at the mess I just made. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but again, what's nice about this tool, look how beautiful those shavings are. Just come right off. So smooth, so clean. So As I'm coming down on it here, yeah, show the crowd. I'm rolling in. And show, show everybody out here. If they can't turn your body that way. Turn around the other way. Yeah, yeah. 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 So right in your head. Like, man, is that good? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So as I'm rolling down, I'm engaging the blade at that point and it's cutting right there. And as, as it comes along, I find that sweet spot and I slide with it. And you're cutting on the heel of the tool, right? I'm cutting the middle of the tool. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not using the heel. Like I, like I said before, what I like about this tool is that it cuts that smoothly because I'm not cutting on, on a corner. I'm using the bow in the middle. So if I'm cutting the, the bow in the middle, it just slices right off. So some people call this a planing cut. Some people call it a slicing cut. That's why they call it a slicing because it just slices right off. So again, so I'm going to face a little stuff. Go back into hibernation here. And you can see, well, you may be able to see, as I roll it down to engage, you can see where the, the shavings start there. If I want to get really aggressive and go faster, I can take off my material, but I, have, I, I take a chance of catching it. I don't want to jam the tool into the material, I want the tool to do its job. harmonic vibrations in, you know, in the middle, is that because it's flexing a little or are you putting more pressure on the tool in the middle versus down closer to the headstock? I'm using uniform pressure the whole way across. I'm not putting more anywhere else. 
And that's really important. Like I said, I want the, I want the tool to do the job. I don't want to force the tool. So if I push too hard, I'm going to put the kind of pressure you're talking about. So when I'm cutting, I'm literally touching that edge and just gliding. I'm not pushing in at all. I'm letting the tool do the job. Okay. So what's it's our fun, line? I don't it's know. making more noise in the middle versus on the end. Why? I don't have a reason for you. Does it really matter? I didn't notice it. I guess it's okay. <laughs> You see, I have a little work since I worked out the other day. I still have a lot of wobble in here that I'm not happy with, but it's what happens sometimes. There's been some uh, movement on it since I cut it the other day, so this side got a little uh, warped, so this side is right where I want it to be. Okay, Jay. If, if your tool rest is at 9 o'clock, as far as the face of the clock, and at the top is 12 o'clock, where are you presenting your tool? Closer to the 9 o'clock or more at the 11? Probably 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, yeah. so you're really on the top of the, the arc. This is another thing that you'll think about is the, the arc in your, in your, in your grind. Uh -huh. So where, as you come down that, that, that grind, do you engage? Come up here and take a look. Pardon me? Get him up here and take a look. Come up here. I, I know I'm trying to Ray here. said get up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ray. Demonstrated on this side. We're demonstrated on this side. I think people can see it better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I should do this right <laughs> Yes, I am industrious. Let's get this. Uh -huh. I got a flat spot right here. Yeah, get rid
So one more little flat spot over here. Yeah. But that's pretty much what we're looking for. Do a little more here, just to get rid of that flat spot. So now what I would do if I was not forgetful, I forgot my sandpaper. I would do a quick sand across it, do a finish on it. But I left my sandpaper at home. My bad. So anyway. Sorry? What do you use for a finish? So I've been using X sanding uh, compounds for the last year or so. Before that, I used uh, pretty much almost always uh, linseed, linseed oil. So I got a lot to learn as far as things <coughs> go. Do you find that you have to redo that after a while because it gets absorbed? I haven't had enough experience to, to, to tell you, in all fairness. So far, it's worked for me good. I like, what, I like the way it turns out. So X, you can get online. It's easy. I don't have a code for you like some people on, 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 on uh, YouTube do. But... <laughs> Yeah. One more thing I'll do for you real quickly is this piece. And the reason I'll do that is because, again, it's really important to understand that you don't need to have a, a round piece to start with. This was a leg from a uh, bed. It got thrown out by somebody, and I acquired it. I had a whole bunch of this. So I hate seeing stuff going to a dumpster if it can be utilized. This is oak. So again, if I go into my room, If you get a piece of material stuck between the cutter and the wood, you're stalled out. You gotta let it drop. I know you knew that, right? So again, you got a really super clean finish there on a piece of oak. Without, without using the sandpaper. I can do the whole piece, but you get, you get the, the idea, right? So, questions? Questions? Good job.
What angle do you grind you. on your skew? What angle? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a compound in 40, so it's 20, 20 degrees. 20 degrees included in angle? Yes. 20 on each side. 20 side. So it's 40 degrees. 40, that's what I said, yeah. 40 and 20 side, yeah. So I picked up the, uh, you can't see me over here, but on the grinder, you see the, uh, the platforms I have are the Stuart Batties. I picked those up from uh, Woodturner's Emporium. They're making them and they're great. You know, they, and the fact that I've got the Wolverine jig, Woodworkers Emporium makes the attachment that I've got over here. So you can use that on the Wolverine jig. So you, you don't have to buy a whole new platform setup. So it works real nicely. So. Anyway. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. They're making them again? Yeah, I just got them. Yeah. So. Pick up a whole bunch of that stuff. So it's got nice stuff. Yeah. But they work great. So, question. What angle did you say you have that out? It's a compound 40, so it's 20 each side. Yeah. Stand up again. Stand up. I have never had a problem with it myself. I've been using linseed for 14 years now. Again, I make the martial arts weapons, and I've got people in 15 countries buying my weapons from me through Facebook. I've never had one person complain about the linseed oil. Some people said to me about it going rancid. I've never, I've never experienced it. So. No, but I've got people out there as long as 14 years ago that bought them from me. Nobody's ever said anything to me. And my own, I use myself, so I never had a problem with it. Usually it's not linseed going rancid, it's vegetable oils. The vegetable oils will go rancid, so you've got to be careful. Of yeah, so you've got to be careful of things like olive oil or whatever you know, oil or something like that, because that will go rancid. But the linseed and the mineral oil don't. Yeah. If we were looking to start uh, learning ourselves how to do skew, what skew would you recommend us recommend that you be getting, and what type of wood should we be, be trying to destroy? Two great questions. So, to answer your first question, as far as I'm concerned, Alan Lasser skew is the best skew in the market. Period. I've got a bunch of skews. I got like ten different skews. This is the best skew I've ever used. I'm using it since day one. So, as I said earlier, if you learn on this skew. This is what you'll like. This is what I learned on. So maybe somebody else has a different opinion. But uh, there are a lot of skews out there. Doug Thompson skew I like very much. D and D makes uh, nice uh, skews. Carter, I understand, makes nice skews. Ray got a nice uh, skew from Carter I used last year at his house. So there's a lot of great skews out there. I'm a fan of Alan Lasser's skew. They make a smaller one too. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I have two. Okay, I have to buy another one then. Always. Well, you guys just watched me sharpen like five skews earlier, right? The guys up in front here watched me sharpen like five of my skews before I started. It's a minute each one. Once you get your shape on there, it's just a touch up. And you're not going to sharpen it every time. In between sharpenings, you're going to use a honing, a honing stone or a diamond. So you're not you're not sharpening every time you need to go go back and start again. So the honing is really really fast. You know. Okay. Hey, Jay. Can we move the camera real quick? Can you show us sharpening? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Okay, so the question was, can I show you guys how to sharpen this? Is sure. I got one two here that is square. I got one here that is an oval. I hate these guys are sharpening, but this is a little bit. So the platform. I like this because of the round bottom here, I can move my hand around really easily for controlling. When you're sharpening, you put your thumb on to hold it in place and be careful as you move across the uh, cutter. I love CBM wheels. 
If you haven't used a CDN wheel before and you're using stones, get a CDN wheel. You'll never have to shape, shape it again. It'll never change shape by you. It'll stay consistent for, forever. It's great. I've used these for like five, six years now. They're awesome. The grid on the stone. This is a, what is this? It's a 180. This one is a, an 80. So I have 80 for shaping. I've got the, what did I say, 180? Yeah. And 180 for uh, fine work. So, and for what we do, you really don't need anything, anything that's, uh, you know, fine in that. You know, turn on the machine. You place it on your, you guys can't see too much. No, that's not working. Yeah. Okay. Well, anybody really wants to see this, just come up and watch it. Do you guys want to come close? It's up to you. Okay, right on. Right on. I've been told that. I'm going to place my, my tool on the, on the uh, platform, which are one side, and they Check my cut. I was sharpening this on a different grinder before. I'm not going to take it over the right now. The edge is good. I can come with that right now. I would have not had no problem with that right now. It looks not Yes. So again, now this one is a, a novel. The problem with this is that you have to rock on it, change your angle. So you want to get to the middle as best you can. It's curved. What's the source of the LMS? LMS. L-A-N. L-A-N-C-R. So that's so that. So what 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 turns Emporium is manufacturing the sort of batty products. So you get them exclusively through them right now, and they work great. You know I love them. So that's two tools to sharp in like thirty seconds. It's pretty cool. Any other questions? We're good? We're good. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Jay. Oh, it looks like it's got a turner here. I gotta get a room under that. Yeah, don't slip up. I did that in my shot. Oh, I and it was about this. <laughs> okay, everybody. A uh, couple quick things, and then we're going to take a 10 minute break. Uh, first off, uh, during your break, there's coffee and uh, treats that Kelly has uh, prepared for us back in the kitchen through that blue wall. So let's give her a round of applause for doing that for us. You have to use the restroom. There's one here through a, a second door and there's uh, men's rooms right out down the hallway here. The ladies is right around the corner. Did everybody get that? Okay. Also, I want to say for the, those of you here today, have you been able to hear okay or should we look into a sound system? Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to get a projector because there's no place to store the big TV. So, yeah, we got a screen. It's just that their projector is not working. So we're going to invest into a projector. So we're also going to be upgrading our electronics and stuff to, to do a better job with Zoom now that we're live. It's, uh, it's um, we did well today, but it was a lot of band-aids and duct tape <laughs> to get everything going. So we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at that. So 
Anyways, without further ado, uh, when we come back, we're going to do uh, the Facebook challenge, tool review, show and tell, and so on. So let's take a 10 minute break. If you've seen somebody, huh? Next month is, next month is October. To be determined. I'll tell you right offhand. I'll have that in the announcement. Okay, Cindy Yates isn't here. She's the one handle that. So I'm let's here. take a 10 minute break. If you've seen somebody you don't know, introduce yourself, say hi. If you've seen somebody you haven't seen in a long time, introduce yourself and say hi. Hey, Jeff, can you hear me? Just a thought. I, I don't have any questions or anything. I can hear you on Zoom, but I don't know. Do do Right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. Just had that cold best there. Almost a month in the hospital. Oh. And three weeks in rehab. Why well, I lost a lot of balance. And, uh, yeah, it's nasty like, stuff. What? It's nasty stuff. Oh, I've yeah. had some friends. I lost between 35 and 40 pounds in three weeks. Wow. And I couldn't sit down for a while because it hurt oh. until I got a little more fat on the front. <laughs> My goddaughter is a nurse in the ER. The thing, things she's seen are just mind boggling. Yeah, well, my wife is a nurse. She was a nurse for only 50 years. Yeah. And uh, I got a daughter that's a nurse down in Kentucky. Uh -huh. So. Wow. Well, I'm glad you're doing that. I'm glad you're doing that. Yeah. Hey, spend about 10 to 20 minutes on the leave. Got to sit down. It takes me twice as long to get half as much stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Hey, uh, Cindy asked me if I do a demo next month, but I said, if you can't get anybody else, I'll do it. But, I, you know, I'm glad she's not here. Oh, she's on her way back. She's been out in Washington State. Oh, okay. Uh, her and her partner's been doing a lot of traveling and camping. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, but um, she, she just Cindy is one. Oh, I love Cindy beyond belief. Me too. And uh, you know her health problems are enough that she says she just can't be, you know, being uh, pre vice president anymore. And I understand it. And you know, we were in our board meeting there, and we were talking about it. it's very hard to find somebody to be president. Yeah. And yeah. I can't continue on. Just well, actually, this this year and a half, the total is down. That shouldn't count. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've done more than not against any other president. I think I've done, you know, plus that and taking on the responsibilities of the video. Yeah. And all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so, sure, um, sure. but um, but if you can't get anybody, you know, mm -hmm. it'll be something really so bad. Yeah. Okay. Jake, but I think we'll do a good job. Yeah. I'll see him. Yeah. He comes over to my place quite a bit. He needs a lot. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's just a grip. There's no better in this club with the skew than Jake. Yeah. I mean, he has just got it worked right now. Yep, that's one tool. I just we need to make a pick it up and set it down. Well, a, a skill is a there's a lot that you got to use all the time. Well, I have some time. Yeah, I thought I heard that. I'm going to get a short little video. We should be able to put it out tonight. Okay, okay. And if you can't bring it in, people can just, if they're like not coming to meetings, they should at least try to drop it off if we brought it up. So, guys, you know, just like. Any of the officers, you know, people can drop us a screen that movie or certain officers. Oh, yeah, as you guys were working on this, just more stuff over here. So, does anyone need a cement? Stand here, please. Guys, you're about to spray.
The clean cut, I turn up slightly, and I'm with this. Jeff, can you hear me? Is anybody monitoring the Zoom? No. Cindy, I don't think anybody's I was the president of the club. Here. We had Al and Lisa come here, uh -huh. and uh, he's at the Royal Senior Center. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. That's something we'll have to try to correct. But somebody needs to be monitoring and mentoring the Zoom. Yeah, I tried to ask Jay a question earlier and didn't get heard. So, but luckily, my question got asked by somebody else. I don't think they can hear us. Okay. Um, well, I'm in Washington State. That's why I'm not at the meeting, but um, my vacation. But I'll address that with Jeff. Yep. Well, I'm in New Hampshire, so the same boat as you, but you're country. Great. Great. This guy's using a stew and he's using a flower. Hey, Jeff, can you hear me? There's a little grady there. It's my fault. I'm not trying to answer. It's my fault. I got to keep them short because otherwise I can't keep my so right. break them. Okay, that'll be enough to get the test going. Thanks. Thank you. That is the speech. I can tell This guy from uh, Texas sold me like eight pieces of this a couple years ago. I finally kept the first one. So it's dry right now. It looks like the way he cut it.
Yeah. Straight off the cut. Yes. All right. Good. Thank you. Okay, can everybody take a seat? Everybody take a seat. Hey guys, real quickly. I brought these for a couple of people that didn't show up today. So I'll put these on the table so Tom can wrap them off. This wood is called Jara. It's from South, from uh, Australia. It's phenomenal for, for making anything you want. A lot of you guys have made uh, tool handles with it. I thought it was the best wood they've ever turned. So I got two pieces here for the uh, table. I don't know. I'm going to stop first. Thanks. Now we're going. All right. So I will tell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody, if you can everybody take a seat, please. Okay, let's get the meeting started again. Um, a couple quick announcements that I forgot to uh, mention earlier. Um, number one was the Facebook challenge. I didn't do that one when we did the President's Challenge, so I'm going to do that real quick. We had a total of 24 people take part in it. Let me get the, my number counter up, change that to 24. The winner of the Facebook challenge is Dennis Montville. So Dennis will begin a certificate. Um, real quickly, now that we're back together, we have the library up again. There is a lot of library items that are checked out um, and we like to get them back. Uh, you've got to be more than done with them by now. So if you've got library items, Plan on bringing them to the next meeting, or if you can't make the meeting, contact me or one of the other board members and you can get it to us and we'll bring it back. But there's a lot of items checked out. We'd like to get them back to Ed. So uh, help us out with that. Um, let's see. 
Like that, like that. Where's Chuck at? Anything else? Was there anything else? Okay. Very good. So we're going to do the tool review right now. Did anybody bring a tool to review? Okay. Can you guys hear me yet? On Zoom. Well, I did not like the price of these uh, sanders that they sell. So I made one out of uh, this uh, light fixture part spotlight. Uh, so it's adjustable. And uh, I had some bearings already that ended up, I just had to clean this uh, end of the, out with the drill. And I put in two of the bearings so I wouldn't not tend not to cock when I used it. And then uh, this was a little longer, I cleaned that up. And because it was only, I think aluminum, I used the, I, the wood lathe and the parting tool, I think, to cut the extra part off and then made a handle. So uh, the bearings were uh, like 50 cents a piece, although you might have to buy uh, 10 of them. But uh, so anyway, I made this tool and you can get this part here at like one of the woodworking stores. Thank you all. Might I say that's just ingenious. <laughs> a light fixture. That's just ingenious. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, I was going, I, I've got a couple things here. I was going to bring my um, Carter axe tool, uh, actually um, Ron Campbell axe tool. And then I realized I already showed that in one of our uh, Zoom meetings. So what I brought with me today is something that I picked up when I was at Ron Campbell's retreat, and that's the Carter faceplate system. This is a really cool system. Uh, I use three inch face plates a lot. And uh, when I'm turning a log, I use a six inch. And uh, they have a system here where this is interchangeable. So you just have these flat face plates and you yeah. put this piece on and mount it in and you're ready to fly. And nice, a lot of screw holes if you've got a big heavy piece. Like this is going to a big 12 inch round piece of burl tonight. And uh, that's gives a lot of... Huh? No, I'm not wrapping that off. No. The other thing I got with it too, for, for people, I don't do this too often, but for people who uh, uh, make bull blanks in a circle cutting jig, you always have that hole in the center and that's your exact center. Well, Carter came up with this device that has an adjustable quarter inch rod in it. And that's just held in by an Allen screw. And you just screw it into your face plate and I don't have it sized for this right now, but you're gonna have that sticking out about a quarter of an inch, put it down in and that perfectly centers your face plate so that you can then screw it down and have a perfect center and not have that much cleanup to do after you've turned it around. Pretty slick. These are two separate items. I think this was like 30 bucks. And I think the face plate system was uh, 45 or 50. Um, little pricey, but well worth it. Carter makes great stuff. If you don't have Carter products, they make incredibly good stuff. So uh, that's my tool review. I highly recommend them. The uh, center finder, mm -hmm. does that come in different different uh, threads? Yes. Yes, uh, it comes, this is the uh, one and a quarter by eight. They have a one by eight. And I think they have a, is it M33 for yes. European? They got yeah. That, and they also have one for a mini blade. That's the one by eight, is yeah. it? Yeah. All that, you know what it's designed for? I can tell you. It was designed for schools, and we did it at the tech shop in Detroit because we had a lot of people wanted to use delays, and we only had one or two faceplates. So it was easier to have them check out a faceplate, and the rest of it was there for you to use so you could remount your stuff. One time we had 30 different people that had stuff mounted on faceplates. So that's the only way to do it. You yeah. want to unmount something. 
Yeah, nice. And when I was doing the big drum, I had one for each drum, and it might take six weeks before you could turn it again because of the movement of the wood, and you don't want it to lose center. Right. Yeah. That's why I got them. I keep them up, but I got it yeah. one time. I got yep. like 20. It's always nice to get the history of things. When I was a kid, I hated history. And now that I'm older, you know, I'm constantly looking at the history of things. Buy, buy more. I get, I get, I get money. <laughs> You're part of history. Well, I'm part of history. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are my pal. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Okay, we are going to do uh, show and tell next and then, um, and then uh, door prize. So if you brought something for show and tell, get it and bring it up. Uh, and I want you to line up over here so you're coming in from this direction. There's less chance of slipping on cords. Can anyone hear me that's a board member? No, no one here. You can't hear me? We can hear you. Oh, good. I'm looking for some volunteers to do some demo turning. So I got anybody out there that'll do that? Yeah. Hey, Jeff. Cindy's asking for Cindy Yates is looking for demonstrators for demo turning. So if you can do that, uh, please let her know. Contact her. Her information is in the uh, the club info uh, tab on our website. We need October. We got somebody. Ray said we'll do October. Oh, great. Thank you, Ray. And I know we need November to sell all my dogs. Um, Henry can't do it now. So we just got October taken care of for demos. We need somebody for a demo for uh, November. We are talking. I, I think Cindy talked to Matt Harbor. I don't know what the status is on that. It doesn't uh, uh, fill all this one. Uh, Didn't we uh, pay some tuition for him? Did. Yes, Did Bill Stevens and and uh, and. Uh, um, I don't think um, nobody sent any money for. Okay. Well, Sandy Dorn also owes us one. So I'll talk to Sandy, or I'll have Cindy talk to Sandy. Yeah, because we paid her tuition for Ryan Hill. So, okay, it's show and tell time, folks. Today, Jim. We've got this thing here. It's a bird feeder. Okay. It comes apart. Mm -hmm. The shafts are just step shafts. And you go in there. And it's made from wood here and maple here shafts. And I sand glass and we get the texture. It's just the post process. It's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, Ben. When you do your uh, show and tell, do it here so the Zoomers can see us on the camera. The Zoomers. Zoomers. Is that like Boomers? Yes. Okay, Zoomers. Uh, this is a piece of oak uh, that I got from a lady by my house, and it was really thin, so I just lit it on fire and just kind of let it burn, and then scrubbed it with a wire brush, and I did that, I don't know, four or five times to kind of get the, the weird little shapes on the edge. That's all. Nice. So my wife does a my wife does a little ceramic work and she made a, a disc for me and then I made a platter. The platter's kind of heavy to support the weight. The disc goes in there and then I uh, got a knife from Craft Supply and used the same wood so that I made a a, a cheese board out of that. And it's pretty practical and it uh, works real well. I got it. <laughs> Hi, my name's Kathy. Y'all know me. Um, I put it, I chucked up a piece of wood 
I think it's cherry. I did not know what I was going to make out of it. And then I started making it and it like was kind of turning into a vase. And I sent a picture of it to my daughter. My daughter is an interior designer, so she knows design. And she says, well, make the top skinnier. I'm like, okay. And then and I said, well, how do you like the thing around the bottom? She says, I don't like it, cut it off. But when I, but I, as it got smaller, I'm like, I kind of like that. Plus the base was getting so small. I thought if I cut the bottom off, that it wouldn't stand up right. So I did not leave enough room on the wood to part it. So I parted it a little bit of the ways. Then I tried to cut it, cut the block off the rest of the way with the bandsaw and I kind of aired and I showed it to my daughter and I said, well, it's good except for this. She says, nobody's going to look at that. I said, everybody's going to look at that. I said, every wood turner that picks this up is going to look at the bottom. So, where's, your, where's your signature? It's not there. I sought it out. So anyway, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. I brought these to the. Uh, okay, everybody. I brought these both these pieces to the uh, picnic we had a couple weeks ago, and I this was started out or uh, it was roughed out at the picnic, and now I got it turned down to spalted maple. Or yeah, spalted maple. I got it from my brother. He had to cut down a tree to put his garage up there, and he gave me the chunk, and this is how it turned out. It's kind of nice with all the. Uh, black lines in there and everything else and this one i brought this here again because i forgot what kind of wood it was so if anybody can tell me what kind of wood this was i would appreciate it. i want to say mulberry mulberry okay all right so this is mulberry a couple years ago i came in with a uh, long pedestal table um some lady bought it and she she contacted me for she's running a charity uh, auction and she wanted me to donate something, so I might donate this to her auction there. She might like it. So, but it's uh, mulberry. Okay, that's all I got. Yeah, this this is actually a weapon. We still work on. It's made out of uh, red oak and purple <laughs> heart. There's 180 pieces of wood in here. Uh, it's kind of based on a uh, stay vase that was in Wood Magazine a long time ago. I I converted it to a uh, what's my jigger vase? <laughs> a circle vase, or and I have one of those. Uh, Oh, geez, what the hell do you call that thing? Oh, the wedgie sled. Wedgie sled. Boy, I'll tell you, cutting these things with the wedgie sled is wonderful because they always match. It's, I, I, it, you know, you don't go through any fooling around. It's, and then I bought some uh, of those uh, wedges that go with it. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop doing, trying to write software to do these things. So I'm gonna start using that software from, uh, well, who is it? Uh, Wood Turner Pro. So anyhow. I gotta finish the bottom a little more so. Beautiful. It's heavy. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, this way. Okay. Uh, okay, everybody, listen up. Hello. Yeah, this is a, a, a an oak bird cap. And uh, what I did with it is, uh, this is the actual shape of it. So I wanted to do something so I can use it, you know, either as a wall, a sculpture, or else sitting on a, a, on a table. And uh, really, it's, it's very simple to do. Uh, there's all there is is carving in it. There's some carving here, which I did with a 90 degree chisel. Uh, this is done with one of those uh, rotary tools. Uh, this is dye, and there was a crack in it here, and I filled it with black epoxy. And uh, but you can see you don't really need uh, very exotic wood. Uh, it's just the techniques that you use, you know, to get different stuff. And what I did with the back. Um, I had a, uh, a, a mortise in here, 
but I didn't want more, that mortise to show. So what I did, I just turned the mortise off and I rounded it off to make it look like that's how I wanted it. Instead of being a, you know, a, a square corner here, you can do a lot of stuff by giving it a small design. So, and then I do some uh, dyes and uh, uh, there's some girl cream on this one. I believe it's green. And this color here, that's actually saddle dye. My wife is in horses and uh, I use one of her dyes. It's a peeping brown dye. And uh, that's what this is. And it came out pretty decent. So that's one. Uh, this is a Eastern red cedar uh, wood. Uh, I wish I have a lot more of this wood. This, I mean, it's just a simple bowl in itself. However, the wood, it, it, there is so much going on and the nuts, it's a bit hard to turn because this grain is going all over, you know, and there is nuts all over in it. You can see them actually in here, uh, but uh, you know, the way the bark angulates like that is what makes it, you know. It's uh, really nice. The finish on this is lacquer. I use satin lacquer. Uh, it's either lacquer or polyurethane. I use lacquer on this one. It's spray on or brush on? It's a spray on, okay. yeah. Uh, I use the Mohawk. I found it to be even better than Deft because Mohawk, it just settles so nice on it. And uh, you can put it on. I must have put 10 coats in one day on this. So uh, it's, it's so easy to put on. And, uh, this is a, a, what we call a three corner bowl, but it's actually a double. So there is one on the top, one in the bottom. It's all made out of the same piece of wood, uh, even the top. Uh, it looks complicated, but it's for those who have done it, it's just done between centers here on the diagonal. And you start in the middle and you go this way and then you go that way. And that's how you get the two uh, different bowls. And uh, I put the uh, scalp Nouveau on this uh, and I used, um, for those who don't know, scalp Nouveau, what it is, it's a, it's a paint. Uh, well, I call it a paint, but it's something uh, it's, and they use either, this one is metal filings in there and the green would be uh, copper. And then you, you put it on and then they have an acid, you spray it. And when you spray it, it just rusts it. So what it does, it makes it look like it's been out in the weather for, you know, a number of years. So the, the rust with the acid, the rusted, the metal pigments into the paint. And this, the copper, it just oxidizes it. And uh, what I did is with the inside, I left it. I didn't put, I just put uh, uh, copper on it but I didn't put any rust on that. So, so that's it. That's how I got this. Very nice. Okay. Well, I think we got everything in the meeting. So uh, let me hear from, do you like meeting face to face? Yeah. Want to do it again? Yeah. Next month, right here, same place. Same bat channel as I used to say. We're gonna do our uh, door prize now. If you haven't gotten tickets, this is your last chance to buy some tickets or are all tickets sold? Yeah, door prize. Everything on the table there. So for those of you who've forgotten, he's gonna call numbers. If your number matches, you just go up and take something off the table, whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're also gonna need- $500 a ticket every we're going to need some help here with uh, getting chairs put away, with cleaning up here. So if anybody can come up here and help, that would be wonderful. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. In, in. Yes. Well, we're leaving. If you guys can, just try to relax and we're all walking the parking lot and just get to us out there. We'll put the truck and we're out of here. Okay. I know I got the cart there for the library, so. Okay. It's all yours.